Hello and welcome back to the program. Lawrence Jones sending in for Dana today. Well, are you ready for some football? The NFL draft kicks off in Philadelphia today for the first time since the 60s. Hundreds of college stars are hoping to find a home with a team during the three-day event. There's a lot of money on the line for some of these NFL prospects. And we have some financial advice for the players and their families. Let's go to Eugene Lee, an NFL sports agent and author of the book, My Brother's Keeper, Above and Beyond the Dotted Line with the NFL's Most Ethical Agent. Welcome, Eugene. Thanks for having me, Lawrence. Thanks for coming back again, man. Uh, so tell me, you're, you're an agent. What do you look for in uh, an eligible uh, player for the league? What do you look for? Two things we look for when we evaluate. We look for traits, athletic traits to play on Sundays and to excel at the next level. And then we look for something called football character. Football character is not a black or white term. It's a gray term that you delineate by looking at various traits, intangible traits, such as toughness, passion for the game, work ethic, competitive nature, durability. We want young men who not only have the ability to get drafted, but to build careers and get to the second contract. So, so as an agent, although you're one of the ethical ones, uh, you guys make your money based on the players. So tell me how it is representing a quarterback uh, and a running back and then defensive players like your defensive end. What, how do you handle those cases differently? You look at value of position. Now, obviously, your quarterbacks are going to be level one. They're going to have the highest value of position. They're the quarterbacks of the field generals. They're the leaders of the team on the field. On top of that, you're going to have your cornerbacks, your athletic safeties are going to be level one players. Any type of edge rusher who's disruptive across the line of scrimmage is a level one player. And you see that in the first round every year. You see the number of players at those positions drafted in the first round. Now, your running backs fall into level three, which means they pretty much have the lowest value of all these positions unless you have a special talent like a Leonard Fournette that's coming up in the draft this year. Okay, so, so help me out because I'm a Cowboys fan, all right? There's no secret. We need some people on the defensive end of the, of the field. Um, we're doing pretty good with all offense. We got Dak. We got Zeke. Uh, we still got Jason Witten. But we need somebody on the defensive end. What do you expect to be the first pick for the Cowboys? <laughs> That's hard to say. I know they need some help on the defensive side. You know, it's a very, very deep cornerback and safety class, extremely deep this year. I mean, you can't go wrong with an athletic safety like a Malik Hooker if he drops to the Cowboys. You know, the cornerback class is deep. You know, I have a guy, a riser like Kevin King from Washington, UW. Size and vertical speed, you know, can play press man. So you may see the, the Cowboys go either outside a defensive back or they may go on the defensive front. You're an agent. Uh, uh, you're not necessarily a financial agent, but you're their agent. You, you, you try to give them as much as counsel uh, as you can. You got these young guys coming into the league, uh, and they have all this money. A lot of them... Uh, grew up poor just like me, uh, and this is their big break. Uh, they've been working for this their entire life, and now they have all this money. What is the first thing you tell them? The first thing that I would tell them is a piece of advice that was given to me a long time ago by a dear friend of mine, a former GM in the league, and it's how you handle time and money. That will be the, the defining factor of how you succeed in the NFL. How do you handle time and money? Because you're going to be coming from college where you have very little of both, to your rookie season in the NFL where you'll have ample time, you'll have ample money. It's how you handle both that will define your future success, and they need to be prepared for that. So, so tell me this, Eugene. Why, why do so many of the players um, go broke? Why? Why? I mean, you know, three to five years, I think that was the latest poll that says after they leave the league, within three to five years they go broke. What happens? Do they continue to live that lifestyle uh, I, after I, they live, leave the, the league? And I think the average is the same. You, you're, you're more likely to play three to four years within the league uh, before having to leave. I think it's a combination of both. I mean, with the average career around three, three years right now, yeah. a majority of NFL players are not getting to the second contract. And unless you're a first-round pick, and even then you need to be very diligent with your money, unless you're a first-round pick who has been extremely diligent with his signing bonus, you're going to need to get to that second contract in order to be financially secure for the rest of your life. I think it's a combination of both. I think you have young men. You know, we all feel invincible at some point when we're 22, 23 years old, but then when you're an elite athlete, you can take that invincibility up a, up a notch. Mm -hmm. You feel invincible. You feel that your career could go on for 15 to 20 years. And then the other component you touched on earlier, you, you don't get 
you don't acclimate yourself to living a non high profile expensive lifestyle and that's the downfall for a lot of these guys when they stop playing is the income stream is not there but they're still trying to live at that same type of level and that's that's a deadly combination so so when you when you talk to your players do you do you tell them hey don't try to buy this big house don't try to buy this car what do, do you give them that advice or do you let them go we do we absolutely try to guide our we do guide our players in the right way we it comes down to a matter of common sense and being rational and reasonable you know, if a young man is single, he has no family, has no, he's not married, doesn't have a wife or kids, does he really need 10,000 square feet? Right. Imagine? You know, it comes down to, to common sense and just having a rational, reasonable conversation. And it usually falls upon open ears with us because those are the types of young men that we recruit and represent. Eugene, you're, you're one of the good ones. That, I mean, that's what you tell me, brother. You tell me, and, and, and I hear a lot of people speak yeah. highly of you. Tell me Thank one you. of the success stories that you have with one of your clients uh, as we're going into draft day right now. Well, we have a young man from Temple University, Nate Hairston, and Nate Hairston was a converted wide receiver. You know, he really didn't have much publicity or popularity going into his senior season, but he had faith. He kept his faith. He worked hard. And from the moment he had signed with our agency at the end of December, we were able to work together to get him a Shrine Game invite, a late Senior Bowl invite, which we ultimately passed on due to his stellar performance at the Shrine Game, and then a late Combine invite. Now, he's rising up draft boards. It's a deep cornerback class, but he brings a lot to the table in terms of a, a four-phase special teams player who's tough, who can tackle, who can play the nickel. I sound like, a, I sound like his publicist right now, but... Nate's a special young man, and I think we can expect him to go early day three on Saturday. What makes him, not as a football player, but character-wise, what makes him different than many people that you represent? His competitive nature. You know, mm -hmm. Nate is a survivor. He's had to work for everything he's gotten. I know that's cliche sometimes, but in terms of his approach, in terms of, you know, everything that he's been able to achieve on the field, he's had to, to go out and get. And I think that he competes every single down. And that's very unique, even at the NFL level. Yeah. Eugene, thank you so much for coming on the program, brother. Thanks for having me, Lawrence. Have a good one. Up next this week, it's been a Berkeley versus Ann Coulter. We'll talk about the attack on free speech. And later, Joy Behar uh, compares illegal immigrants to slaves. We'll discuss that one when we come back. Stay here. <laughs> 